we were talking about favorite authors. I don't know if anyone knows this. Lauren Lean is my favorite author and I stalk her a lot. So luckily she likes being stalked. She's super friendly. And when I first met Lauren, I emailed her and I asked her if she could write faster because I like her stories so much so that I could read more stories. And luckily she has. Lauren, I don't know if anyone's familiar, she's a contemporary romance author. She not only writes a ton of great, amazing books, she also is great at graphic design. Uh, she works out, she travels, she does website design. Mm -hmm. she has fun all the time. <laughs> she's super nice and she has a dog and she's living all over the country, right? You're always traveling and going to places. And Yes, moving is kind of a hobby. Yes, and when she's not, she's, I don't know if you guys know this, but she's changing her website all the time. <laughs> So I think this is a symptom of people who are really good at graphics. So um, I know I've said a lot about you. Do you want to say a little bit more about yourself? Yeah. So, I mean, you did a great intro, very flattering. Um, but I'm Lauren Lane, and I'm going to tell you guys right now that I actually live in a studio in Manhattan. So there's background noise like my dog right now. Um, you're going to hear some sirens. It'll be a little bit of an adventure. Um, but yeah, so I'm an author. I've been published for about three years. And then this past year, I decided that I also wanted to do a web design company with my husband. So we have a company called Last Word Designs um, and we run it together and it's basically just for authors. So it's, we kind of try to pimp ourselves as the expert in author websites, um, mostly fiction, but we, we're starting to dabble in nonfiction as well. Good. And I guess writing wise, how many books are you working on? I know you have a ton of books coming out. What's your deadline schedule look like? It's insane. Um, so I have seven books out this year. And actually, just this past Friday, I turned in the last book of 2016. So that was exciting. Um, but then, of course, right around the corner is my 2017 schedule, which is also looking to be a little bit nuts. Um, I'll probably have six books there. But it's not due until August, which for me feels like an eternity. Um, yeah, I have, I have a little month and a half break. Good, great. Um, so let's talk about the website and Last Word Designs. Uh, why don't you tell us, you know, who's your ideal client? It sounds like it's fiction, but you know, is it someone who has a website already or someone who wants to do a rebrand? Sure. Either either way, we've done both. We've taken people that don't have any website or they have kind of a baby website, if you will, and we sort of blown them out a little bit bigger. Um, we've also taken people that had a very robust website, but they weren't liking it or wasn't feeling modern, and we've redone that. So really a little bit of everything. Um, I think probably because of my my network, we've tend to do a lot of romance authors, but we are by no means limited to romance. So anyone that comes to us and just wants a really clean professional site, that's sort of, that's who we're looking for. Um, and we're also looking at those people that want, uh, that are sort of thinking long-term vision in terms of like, this is their career and they want their writing career to be a business. So we don't as much do the ones that want the kind of like the fluffy, really pretty blogs. We can do a blog, but this is much more sort of, the people aspiring to be James Patterson and Nora Roberts, you know, we, we kind of aspire to create that very, that very clean and professional look. Okay, good. And you know, I, I don't know if anyone's been on her site, but there, there were three different packages. And do you want to just walk people through what the differences are and what's best for each person? Yes, and you're probably going to kill me because I didn't tell you this. We've actually just changed it a couple days ago. We're playing around with our format. Of course. Um, so we used to be, yeah, of course. Surprise. Um, but we used to have three different pricing tiers, um, sort of based on how many pages you needed. And what we really found is that there were two, basically two groups of authors. There were the people starting out where budget was very, very important to them. Um, and they were looking something that looking for something that was professional, but also affordable. Um, and then there were the people that really knew what they wanted. They wanted something very custom, um, very specific, kind of tailored to them. So basically what we've done now is we have our custom packages, which is, you know, the kind of the, the fancier ones. And we've just launched this um, new thing called, well, we were kind of working on the name, but right now they're pre-made websites, which is basically we've gone in and created these the templates, but there's only like one per user. So if there's a website that you like, you can basically go and buy that and we will hand that specific website off to you, except with your name and your bio and your headshot um, and your books. Great. So as far as what's popular, uh, we just changed it like two days ago, so we'll see. Um, but it's basically, it's two, basically two pricing tiers depending on how much customization you're looking for. Okay, and we talked about this a little bit before, but you know, if you're not familiar, I know a lot of websites right now in WordPress, but um, all of their websites are in Squarespace. So do you wanna talk about the differences and why you chose that? Yes, I will say that's been, we love Squarespace. So for those of you that are not as web nerdish as me, um, basically WordPress is the most common platform and Squarespace has been a little bit more of a modern competitor to WordPress, basically. The downside being is that it's not free. So for most authors, they can get by on the, the entry level 
pricing, which I believe is $12 a month. And then there's an $18 a month, which is basically the unlimited pages. But what we really like about it is that WordPress, um, and I, I like WordPress, I'm really not knocking it, but it was built first and foremost to be a blog. So way back, way back when WordPress, you know, first came, was first mm -hmm. built by the delightful nerds that built it, it was intended for when blogging was really popular. So what's happened now is it can be turned into like a regular website, if you will, but you have to do a lot of workarounds because by default, your homepage is going to be a blog. You have to set up a different, um, you know, a different page to be your homepage. And for an author that really, I think, wants that clean professional look of almost like a business, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it is a little bit harder to do that with WordPress, where Squarespace, it comes out of the comes out of the box, as we say, looking like a homepage. And then you can add a blog on top of that. You can add social media on top of that. But you don't have to do plugins. There's no code to learn. I could go on forever, but short version. It's just it's a little bit easier, I think, for um, for beginners. And it also has a drag and drop interface, so there's no code to learn, which is a, a big selling point for us. Good. And then, you know, just in terms of design and strategy, what's the biggest mistake you see authors out there doing today? Well, so this is my opinion, so you can take it with a grain of salt. But tying into that WordPress argument, I am um, I'm not a fan of authors whose main website is a blog. And the way you can kind of tell that is if you come to the, the web page and the first thing is it looks like a blog post. And if it's like a cover reveal or some breaking news, I think that really works. Um, if you're very new and you have maybe one or two books and you're really just talking all about one books. But then, you know, fast forward a few years, if you have five books, 10 books, 20 books, you're Nora Roberts, you have 200 books, that's really, it's not going to cut it because then you're forcing your users to basically scroll and scroll and scroll. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that, that's the, the biggest thing I'd recommend. No crazy colors, first of all, it has to be easy to read and then really um, do a little bit of a workaround and just a little bit of effort so it does not look like a blog. Okay. And, you know, also from a branding and website perspective, what are some other do's and don'ts that, you know, off the top of your head, some quick tips? Um, the biggest thing I see is readability and I think it can be really easy to do, um, super, super bright colors. And I've kind of done this myself where you can't resist like, Oh, pink and purple. They're my favorites. Uh, it, it makes it difficult to read. So we do a lot of, um, with usability, which is basically how easy it is for somebody to read on the screen. So the sh short version is by default, we tend to do most of our sites as a white background with black text or maybe a cream background or a light gray. Or if you do want to go a darker website, which fits for maybe a suspense author um, to do, you know, you can do a dark background, but with a white font. So basically don't do a pink website with purple font. Uh, don't do a yellow website with a red font. Your key is, is really to not make it catchy, is to make it easy to read. Yeah, I think that's a good point, because sometimes they, they look a little outdated, like they're from the MySpace era, right? They really, they really do. And I don't know, to be honest, it could just be that white backgrounds are very in right now. Um, I tend to think of them as being classic, but I, I do find that more and more of the bigger brands and the bigger authors are going towards that kind of clean um, white background with black text. It sounds boring, but it's it's working really well, I think. Yeah, it helps. Yeah. So let's talk about landing pages. So you said the worst is to do a blog post. What's What should be on that landing page and what should not? So it depends. There's kind of a couple of schools of thoughts, and I think it depends specifically what you're geared towards. And if it's, say, if it's release week, basically if it's release week or if you have a sale or some big event happening, you really want your landing page or your homepage to be focused all on that. Like you want all of your readers, all of your visitors' attention to go to that one book or that one release or the cover reveal or the sale, whatever it is that you're, you're pimping that week. Um, in terms of sort of the the long longer term and like if you evergreen as it said in the web world, mm -hmm. um, that could be I think as long as it's as clean right. And I think Chelsea said this too. Don't don't throw a lot of stuff at them. Like you want your about and you want your books and you want your contact. If you have a blog, put that in there. But don't just throw like everything you can think of um, because readers don't know where to click and you want one clear point of focus. That focus is up to you, but pick one, three at most, and and center everything towards that. Okay, good. And then, you know, when we talk about copy, everyone um, kind of assumes authors would be really good at copy. And copy is, you know, compelling people and getting them to convert and getting them to join your newsletter to buy. You know, do you think that authors are good at that? Do you think they should try to get some help with that? Yeah, I would say, and I put myself in this category, authors are generally not. Um, the good thing, though, is I think copy actually is not as important for authors it is for book descriptions so mm -hmm. hopefully when it comes to you know selling your book and the description that goes on amazon by all means get some marketing help or if you have a publisher let them do that 
um, or have a couple editors look at it. But when it comes to your website, really the, the book it should speak for itself. So you have your cover, and then maybe if you have a little tagline, either for your series or for the book itself, um, you know, even it's just one line or like a quick little paragraph that I think you could put together pretty well on your own. Um, the biz biggest suggestion I have is resist the urge to be wordy, which is hard for us authors because we tend to, we have like 80,000 words usually. Right. This is a time where you really want to cut and um, people don't like to read lots of text on the web. They just don't. So if you do have a lot of um, information you need to convey, like when in doubt, hit enter so that there's some white space or do bullet points, but never just put like big paragraphs on your website because mm -hmm. people will not read it no matter how good it is. Right. Good, good point. Um, the other thing too is, this is my biggest pet peeve, is headshots. And so it drives me crazy when I go to an author's website and you know everything looks great. And then they have this headshot, and I'm using that in quotes, which is you know a family picture and the dog is next to them, kind of like cut out and or their husband's with them. And they just don't want to spend the money on headshots. And I don't know, is that even important for authors? Does anyone care what they look like? I don't, I don't know. So I will say um, I am not a fan of doing other people in the picture with you. In terms of the professional look, I think you can actually fake that pretty well at home. My headshot is actually taken with my iPhone by my husband standing against a white wall. Um, so you, it, it is possible. Granted, I should also say he has some photography experience. So maybe don't try this at home. Um, but I think the key here is really, for me, is consistency. One thing I really recommend against is using your book cover as your headshot. Maybe on release day, and this is, I know we're branching into social media here, but as a quick tangent, um, if it's on release day, use your book cover just maybe to, you know, get it, give it some attention. But other than that, you really want people to be recognizing you and your name, not just that one book, you know, unless it's, unless it's Twilight or Hunger Games, maybe you can get away with it. But for most of us, we really are looking at sort of this like long-term vision for our careers. We're looking one year, three year, five years, 20 years out. And focusing on that one book cover, I think, is going to bite you a little bit. So whether you want to, you don't, and if you're not comfortable using your headshot, which a lot of people I have found are not, use a logo, but, you know, or like make something prettier or a distinct little heart or a flower, but make sure that when people see your name and your picture, that it's pretty much the same every single time. I think that's more important than the quality itself. Okay. And so, you know, sometimes I notice some erotica authors use, I, I've seen stock photos. So would you ever advocate that? You know, I don't know. It gets, it gets, tricky. I would probably say no, but then I also just say I've seen some people do it and they're wildly successful. So I think if you can make it, if you can make it work and if you have enough branding consistency in other ways, you could probably do it. Yeah. But that's a good point. We should all hope for an Instagram husband. I don't know if you saw that article <laughs> where behind every great Instagram picture is an Instagram husband just following you around <laughs> taking pictures. That's pretty true. <laughs> So, um, okay. So call to action. What should, what if, cause sometimes we ask readers to do too much when they, like you said, there's just so much going on in the page. If there was only one call to action, what should it be? Um, the short version is buy. So okay. if it's, it's your book and that's what you're pimping, you're going to, going to want to say buy now. If we're talking websites in general, make sure you have a book link. Like it should say books or books. Don't try to do anything weird. Don't try to be clever. Don't try to say writings. Um, and I also really recommend doing, like, especially within the navigation, a lot of people aren't going to know your book title off the top of their, uh, off the top of their head. So they're not going to know to click on that and be like, oh, that's her book. You have to tell them books and then say, these are my books. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing I say about call to actions, tiny tangent, but it's a quick one. Um, I have been seeing more and more studies showing that the word newsletter is not doing particularly well. So even if you have a newsletter and you want people to sign up, um, rather than saying, sign up for my newsletter, say something like, get the latest updates or breaking news, or I think Chelsea does this really well. It's, you know, you get something free or, or tell them what they're going to get by signing up for that newsletter, um, because nobody really wants a newsletter. Like that could, that could mean so many things. Um, so really sell it a little bit um, and banish the word newsletter is the short version there. Good. Yeah. A lot of, I think 90% of authors still use the word newsletter. You do. And I mean, I do like that it's clear. So it's, it's not the end of the world. Um, and I think I probably have it on my website somewhere. But I have been noticing, at least on mine, I get a lot more clicks when I change it and I don't use that word. Okay, good. Good tip. Uh, and then let's just talk about, I guess, the newsletter and the blog. And, you know, what are your thoughts on blogging and how each of those relate to each other? So blogging gets um, a bit of a bad name. A lot of people saying that it's out of date. And I would say the traditional form of blogging probably is, but that is not to say that you shouldn't have a blog on your website. 
Um, one thing we've been doing with a lot of our clients at Last Word is basically creating a blog, you know, so it looks like a blog, you go into it and it's basically the date and your title, the post and images, whatever you want to say, but we might not call it that. So we might call it news or updates. And basically what that is, is the place that's on your site when you do have a book come out or that new cover or, you know, a sale or just, you know, so even if it's something personal, that way it's basically a little cue to readers because sometimes readers don't want a blog. They think that's going to be some long winded blog post when really all you want to do is say, you know, that my breaking news, this is what's the latest or the latest. That's another one we do. Um, so I think, you know, blogging in general, you don't have to have one, but it definitely doesn't hurt to have that sort of functionality and just repurpose it a little bit as, as updates or news. And do you make sure to mention every blog post in your newsletter or just sometimes? Just sometimes. Um, I actually have some repetition between my newsletter and my blog content, and I'm pretty open about that just because I'm aware there are people, maybe they've just bought my book, they've just come to my website trying to see if, if they even want to bother following me or reading my next one, and they're probably going to check out my blog without having first signed up for my newsletter. Um, so the really important stuff I'll put in both places. Okay. Great. And I love your blog. So I think it's full of information, <laughs> it's full of book stuff, and then, you know, your process and things like that. And I'm sure there are questions you probably get from people anyway. Yes. <laughs> All right. So now we're up to the website critique. So uh, there was one person, Brenda Drake, I don't know if anyone's familiar with her. She does uh, what's called Pitch Wars. And I'll bring up her, um, I'll bring up her website for you. Um, let's see. Can I bring up her website? <laughs> so Brenda said she was going through a redesign. And so Brenda's a little unique in that Brenda does both her pitch wars and she does her author site all in one. So this is Brenda's site. Um, I don't know. Did you get a chance to look at it, Lauren? I did. Yes. Okay. Can you still hear me? Yeah. So just tell me where you want me to click around and just kind of give what your thoughts are on it from an author website perspective, I guess. Yeah. So first impressions, and I think I mentioned this before, um, I really love that she uses white space. Uh, mm -hmm. I would like to hope that this is a default for a lot of people, but unfortunately it's not. Um, it just makes it easier to read. So even though she has sort of the color up there at the top, uh, obviously she has some green and accent colors going in. The bulk of her content, as you can tell, is pretty much black on white. So that is a very good sign. Um, the one thing I will say, so I was not, I know the name Brenda Drake, but I wasn't all that familiar with her. And I have to say that my first thought when I looked at this is I didn't know that she was an author actually, um, because you don't see that it's not in her tagline. You don't see it right away. Uh, I scroll down and then I see the little, you know, about Brenda section. Um, but yeah, then it says author of touching fate, blah, blah, blah. And so I kind of put the pieces together. Mm -hmm. But one thing I would really recommend is it doesn't have to be in your tagline. You don't necessarily have to say romance author, but imagine somebody coming to your site for the very, very first time. They may not scroll, they may not click, they're just gonna get that one shot, um, you know, kind of like the, the first thing that they see on your homepage and your header. Mm -hmm. And I think having, whether you're referring to the books itself or, you know, you being an author. Um, and if you don't have that, the other recommendation I would have here is to do, and I think Chelsea mentioned this as well, um, there's a lot of different navigations. So if you scroll back up to the top there, the top of the page. So she has home, about me, what did it say, contest schedule, pitch wars, um, and so on. That in general, that's just a lot of options. Uh, and the to me, the most crucial one, if she's an author, which she is, is books is missing. So I don't know, again, not being familiar with her, I don't know that touching fate is a book and pitch wars is not a book. Like just at a, at, at a quick visual, that's mm -hmm. not clear to me. Um, yeah, other than that, like I said, I, I do like it. I would definitely maybe try to consolidate some of those top navigation links so that like all the pitch war stuff, maybe just have pitch wars as one link up at the top. And then when somebody clicks into that, then show them all these other options just for, you know, kind of cleaning it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Same would go for the books, you know, have them go into the books. And then within there, then you could do Thief of Lies and Touching Fate within there. Uh, she has an about me in a contact section with, at the top, which is great. Um, a lot of people don't. I like how the social media icons are very clean. Um, I'm a big fan of just kind of doing the classic and not trying to like reshape them into anything, anything too crazy, just because people really do know those, those icons pretty well. Um, yeah. Am I, oh, sorry. I'm just looking at the time. Am I going over here? 
Oh, no, you're fine. I mean, we're a little over, but it looks like it. I can't stop my rambling. Um, <laughs> and yeah, the other thing, I have mixed feelings. So she has a sidebar here, and that I think is, is a pretty common WordPress functionality. It, I think you can go both ways on this. I personally don't love them only because I like to keep my, my viewers and my readers focus on the stuff at hand, which is the main content on the page. Um, so yeah, because you have thief of lies and then you're oh, right away, your eyes kind of distracted by the stuff to the right. Mm -hmm. I think on a blog that, that definitely works because you want them to kind of click on all the things and stay on your blog for a while. But if you want them to buy your book, you really want to make it clear. Here's my book. Here's my buy button. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. She, I think these are two sidebars over here on the homepage too. Right? It is. Yeah. No, I'm looking at that. Yes. And then the blog posts up here and then the blog posts again. Yes, I do like how I know I was saying that I, I'm not a big fan of um, having the blog as the homepage. I will say if you are going to go that route, she does a very, very good job at it. I like how she has that top section there, mm -hmm. uh, just sort of visually appealing. You have the most recent one. It's kind of divided up. So you get it's sort of visually appealing, but then there's also hierarchy to it. So you see the one on the left there, you know, that's big. You have the two little ones on the side. And then sort of as you go on, then it becomes more of a list format. That's that's much to me, that's preferable to doing just sort of like the laundry list of blog posts that you'll sometimes see. Right. Yeah, it's very uh, blog friendly. There's the blog there. And then she even has a calendar here if you want to look for blogs by by date. Yes. Yep. And yeah, and I, I, I don't want to be too critical. You're the, too critical here either because she really does have this whole pitch force thing going on, which I stalked for a while and it looks awesome. <laughs> um, so her her entire thing is maybe a little bit different than than a lot of us, us authors where we really are trying to keep the focus on the books. So she has a unique challenge in that she has to represent both. Um, my recommendation there would probably be at the top then to make it very, basically give your viewers or your readers two options. Like do we you want to go to pitch wars or do we want to go to the books? Mm -hmm. um, and don't make them try to figure out which is which and which one do I want to click on. Um, and also the people that come for her pitch wars, make it really easy, you know, upsell your books a little bit because she's got all this great traffic coming in. It would be great if she could kind of kick them over to Touching Fate and Thief of Lies. It's really odd because when I did this before with Reedsy and we had a cover designer on to do cover reviews, I had so many covers we didn't even have time. Oh, Renee Webb. Okay, Renee Webb. You guys up for Renee Webb? Cool. Yeah, definitely. So. Also, nice to meet you, Laura. <laughs> um, okay, so let me bring up Renee with one E. Can you guys see it? Yep. Yeah. Renee Webb, author of Contemporary Romance. She has about Renee, the novels, blog, and newsletter sign up. Um, okay, so I'll chime in here. My first thought is I love how big your name is, and I also love that it's fair. I just love that clear author of Contemporary Romance. Um, that's one thing, and I, to be honest, I don't even, don't even have it on my own site, but the more I've been looking at author websites, the more I'm like, Ooh, like, are they an author? Uh, like, what, what do they write? How do I find it? And this is especially important if you have a, an all common name. I'm shocked how often I'll end up on somebody's website thinking, oh, it's the author. And it takes me a good five minutes to figure out, no, not the author. Um, so definitely kudos to, to calling that out and uh, being very clear on who and what you are. Yeah, yeah you share sure the same name as a, as a model. Right, I do. Yeah, I do. And she also has black hair. Um, so I think there's some confusion. I get lots of, do you want to be a bikini model? I'm like, no, you definitely have the wrong one. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I would just say, Renee, I really love that, like, you have, like, it's really clear that what you do. Like, I agree with Laura. Like, it's just very clear. Um, my one thing would be to change that thing that says newsletter to sign up to something like get started because that's a really great way for them to be introduced to your writings. Um, and, and like Laura mentioned earlier, newsletter is not a word that people are really signing up for. So you want to make them think and know and understand that they're getting so much more than a newsletter because normally they are getting so much more than a newsletter. And what do we think about, because it looks like you just land, you land at her about page. The about page is the home page. Right. 
Thanks. So I can see what are the at the, the top then there's about and then there's yeah. newsletter. What, what are the other there's ones? Novels, a uh, blog, and newsletter sign up. So novels, she has each of her three individual novels or a work in progress. Yeah, my inclination is always, and I feel like I'm being a broken record, uh, I obviously I have strong opinions on this, is to do some sort of homepage. So rather than dropping them directly onto about or onto a specific book page, um, give them a little bit, like sell them a little bit. And you can do that a lot by looking at other, like go to, I think Chelsea mentioned Nike is another one. Like go to, go to some of your favorite brands or Tiffany or Kate Spade, um, and you'll see sort of a wide variety. So from like the first, you see a little bit of like a little bit of everything. So a little bit about the person, a little bit about the book title, maybe something fun. Um, even if it's a stock photo that's, you know, of a city, if you write city romances or a cowboy, if you do cowboy romances, just something that sort of romances the viewer a little bit. So they're kind of immediately drawn in, um, especially yeah. since this does have a lot of text, which I think is okay on an about page. You know, it's supposed to be your bio, but at first glance, this does look a little text heavy to be your first um, interaction with the website. Yeah, and I would add on to that saying, you know, a homepage is supposed to not just help them understand what it is that you do, but it's also supposed to under, help them understand the essence of who you are and why they should be there and why they're the right person there. So the more that you can have a homepage that speaks directly to them instead of focusing immediately on you and who you are, uh, I think the more you're going to compel people to see what it is that you are writing. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. That's good. Good. Renee, did you have any other specific questions or anything else you want us to look at while we're here? <clears throat> cricket, cricket. <laughs> no. All right. Great. Anyone else? No worries. <laughs> nope. Both gave me some great ideas. <laughs> okay, Vicki Batman. <clears throat> that is one long URL, Miss Vicki. <laughs> Here we go. This is cute. Handbags, books, whatever. VickiBatman.blogspot.com is the website of Vicki Batman, sassy writer of sexy and funny fiction. Avid jazzerciser, handbag lover, mahjong player, yoga practitioner, movie fan, book devourer, chocoholic, best mom ever, and adores handsome. So I don't know if you guys can see it. She has a home. A welcome, Vicky's chats, temporarily insane, temporarily employed, season of surprises, season of magic, man theory and other stories, little birdie, Vicky, I'm guessing these are your titles, right? Bug stuff and other stories, the great fruitcake bake off, twinkle lights, yes. Stories, 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 titles, 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 and then she has a button that says free, and then be my guest, just collecting and book hooks. So my first thought I will jump in and say, I right away, I love that little, um, the, the lady with the purses and the mm -hmm. little city background. I kind of love stuff like that because it immediately gives you sort of an idea of who Vicky is and like what her vibe is. At least I'm assuming Vicky, that's what you're going for. Um, sometimes little visual cues like that, I think can be great for telling someone right off the bat, like, is this contemporary? Is this sort of like city? Is it fun? Is it super sexy? Is it super, you know, romantic, sultry, whatever. Um, so I, I love that touch. The one thing I would definitely recommend is where you have hand, handbags, books, whatever, and I love that as a tagline, to put your name there. So the first thing that people see when they come to your website, make that Vicky Batman, and then maybe right below that, sort of where that, that black and I think turquoise text is, that could maybe be the handbags, books, and whatever. Yeah, and I think my immediate feedback would be around your navigation. Um, that's just so many titles there, and you really want to make it clear for um, exactly what it is that you do. And I don't see one there that just says books. So it might be good to do something like add another page and then list your books there with like a mini description and their um their book cover as opposed to having all the titles kind of immediately on the top because it's just overwhelming for me to make a decision. 
And would we recommend that she get a website redirect mm -hmm. link since this is kind of long yes. to tell somebody? Yeah, Vicki, you can go to GoDaddy.com and you can um, buy a domain name like VickiBatman.com, right? And you can have that forwarded directly to your blog spot. So if it's not quite time for you to up-level your website to something like Squarespace or a WordPress website, um, then that's a really great way to make sure that you are really creating that brand and that consistency across the board um, and making sure it's easy to find you. Oh, yeah, this is, it's Blogger. Yeah. <clears throat> um, page. She has a sidebar. Yeah, I think the biggest thing here is probably, and a lot of that would be helped, I think, if, um, to Chelsea's point of adding all of the books onto an actual book page is really just sort of like the hierarchy. So, Vicki, when you're, when you're looking at your website and you're, when somebody comes to your URL, what do you want them to see first and what do you want them to see most and what do you want them to do? Because right now they have a lot of options, um, especially from that top nav, uh, sort of where they're all listed. And then the more you scroll, the more options there are, which can potentially be great in terms of keeping them on your site for a while. But if you're trying to sell a specific, um, you know, a specific title or you're trying to push a certain title or even new and upcoming one that you're really excited about, Right now, you don't as much have a way to sort of push them towards that. So maybe just bring that front and center on the homepage a little bit so they know, oh, this is what Vicki Batman wants me to click on. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, as a reader, I might just jump to free, but I might not get down there because I might be confused by all the titles. I might think that free is a title. Right. So, good. Yep. I totally agree. And then Vicky's chats must be not. Oh, interviews. Interviews and such with Vicky. Okay. And same thing. I don't know if you guys can see that, but even though I can see the full screen, it is hard to read some of the, the green. It's pretty color, but it's hard to read the green parts. San Diego or bust. Sorry, WA. Nope, it's a book. <laughs> All right. Great. All right. So any other specific questions, Vicki, have anything you want us to look at? Otherwise, I think we're kind of at the end. Great. It's weird because on here you can't tell when someone's typing. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, Vicki. All right. Okay. Well, thanks, Lauren. Thanks, Chelsea. This was really great. I think everyone got a lot of great useful information. Remember, the replay will go out right after this as soon as it compiles to everyone, and it'll be available to you for, I think, 48 hours. And um, remember, I will send out a link to everybody, but it's IamChelsea.com or Chelsea, I am Chelsea Marie .com, uh slash free. Neither yeah. I don't know what you'll get with the I am Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> surprise yeah something different yep and lauren what's your next book that's coming out um my next book oh gosh i can never even keep track is uh to have and to hold which will be out end of july and that's the first in my new wedding bells series so that's a brand new print series it'll be in walmart and sam's club and grocery stores and so i'm pretty excited about it yeah yeah if you guys like series lauren always writes series so there's a ton of you can stay in that world for quite a long time yes <laughs> All right. Thanks. Bye, guys. Thanks, ladies.